Hi, I'm John Dean. I'm a member of the Brooklyn Bird Club, and I will be teaching you how to draw a bird. So to start, I'll tell you the materials that we'll need. So I prefer using a pencil to a pen because pencils are better, in my opinion, for very small details, and also you can erase them. So you should also have an eraser and some paper to draw on, and a reference picture, which I'll get back to later. And also, be sure to be near a pencil sharpener. It doesn't matter if it's electric or manual. They both work. I actually recommend having a manual pencil sharpener because sometimes that can get you a finer tip. So, before we start with um, to draw the bird, I'll go over the different types of bird drawings that you can make. So the first one is the portrait. This only includes the head of a, a, a bird, similar to portrait photography. And uh, the main thing about the portrait is that you can go into very small detail on feathers in the head, um, on the feathers in the head, also the eye and the beak. And uh, it is recommended to use a very sharp pencil for these small details. And you can choose to have the beak open or closed. As you can see in the strong, I chose to have the beak open. And this is an Antarctic shag. The next you can choose is a bird in flight. As you can probably tell from its name, this is a bird that's flying. And it is important to choose the angle that you are drawing the bird from. As you can see from this little drawing, there are lots of different angles and positions that you may see a bird in flight from and therefore that you might want to draw it from. And also something that's important about this is to layer the, the, wing, the feathers and the wing. Like you see here, there are the different layers, like the primary feathers. And um, also that the wing shapes and sizes will vary for birds, such as like this blue petrel, which is a seabird, has very long wings. But if you are drawing a different bird, it might have different shaped wings. And some birds that are flightless have very small wings or no wings at all. So if you're drawing a flightless bird, keep that. Or like not no wings at all, but like very small wings. So also keep that in mind. The next type is a perch swimming or sitting bird. So this is a bird um, that will be like in kind of like a typical position with the wings folded. And if the feet will be shown, you should choose a position for them to be on. And this changes depending on whether your bird is um, is on the ground, like depicted in this picture of an oven bird, um, or if they're on a branch, in which case that will be different. And yeah, that's basically it with feet. It's just if you want to draw the bird swimming with like, and you also want to do a view underwater, you can do them kind of like spread out in swimming position. And um, you should make sure to differentiate from the tail and the wing. That's mostly for like non-birders because uh, it often annoys me how in uh, lots of drawings of birds that people do, the wing and the tail kind of blend together. So, and that brings me to my next point. So you should make sure to either have the wing, the tail coming out from below the wing or up from above the wing. And so now I'm going to teach you how to actually draw the bird. And we'll be drawing a perched, in this case, a perched sit sitting or swimming bird, in this case, a perched bird. So first we, I need to go over the eye before we get started. This is mostly for portraits because then you, you'll need to go into detail about the eye. 
So here I have listed the steps of drawing an eye. So first you kind of make the outline, which is an oval, but the shape will change for different birds. And then you draw the basic shape of um, below the eye. And you can also shade in the bottom half of the eye and leave the top blank. And then you basically go into more detail with that. And you can choose to have an eye ring or eye arches. You guys probably know what those are. But if you don't, eye arches are the is an eye ring that has a gap on the middle on either side of the bird. An eye ring is a um is a ring of pale feathers around the eye on some birds. And a special tool that I used for these drawings is a blending tortillon. And it's kind of like a stick of rolled up paper. And I find it very helpful for blending colors together. And I used it in some of the drawings I showed you before in my other slides. So now I will actually teach you how to draw the bird. And we'll be drawing, like I said before, a perched bird. And um, so we need to start by picking a reference photo. So I chose this picture of a prothonotary warbler because it's pretty basic. And that's always a good bird to start with because it doesn't have any like striking markings or patterns that will be hard to do. Some people might call it like your typical bird. And um, not everyone likes working with reference photos, but for me, I think I like having one as a guide. And uh, I also don't recommend drawing birds from life because as you probably know, birds are like very fast sometimes and move a lot. Unless it's like an owl or something that's sleeping, but you probably won't be able to get close to that and should not get close enough to draw it in detail. So now we'll draw the bird. And the first step is to sketch the basic outline of the bird. So I like to start at the tip of the beak and then draw down um, the stomach. And then um, the head in this bird kind of gently curves up and then down. And then there's a slope down to the end of the tail, in which case you can choose to draw like the little details on the tail. And then the wing curves up and then curves back down like that. And then there's also some detail with feathers um, in the undertail coverts. And uh, right now I'm leaving a gap for the feet because we'll get back to that in a later step. So the next step is to fill out the details on the beak on eye and feathers. Sorry, it kind of cut, got cut off there, but that's not to say eye. And um, so you can start with the eye because that's a good center point for the head of the bird. And lots of the other feather details there kind of revolve around the eye. And uh, you can, so you should um, keep in mind that if you want to, you can pause this video and uh, like draw the bird if you're actually following along. And if you want to do the eye, you probably don't need to go into that much detail with the eye because this isn't a portrait, but you can always go back to my slide with the steps of the eye. And uh, you can also do the beak, which in this case I just did a very basic beak. So you make sure to include where the beak meets the feathers. In some cases, like in this bird, that's very distinct, but in others there are lots of feathers that like overlap and you'll need to do, draw in that detail if you want. And then also make sure to make the line between the upper and lower mandibles. And you can also do different shading on the beak. And then the next step is uh, to make the wing shape and wing feathers. Sorry, it kind of got cut off again. But so what I like to do for this is, um, like I said before, you, you also need to layer the feathers in the wing when it's folded, even if it's a perch. So you'll start by making the feathers closer to the top of, 
wing and then move down. So you can like follow this, what I drew here or from the picture. And then also make sure to do the area like kind of above the wing, which isn't really the wing, but it's also something that I like doing in this step. And for that, I, you can just fill it out with feathers. And what I do for feathers, like some basic feather patterns, is I just draw a bunch of lines, like small lines really close together in kind of like arc shapes as you can see here. And the next step is to fill out the stomach feathers and also the tail. And depending on the bird, you might need to go into some detail with streaks or spots on the stomach. But because this is a prothonotary warbler, it doesn't have any striking patterns on the stomach. And therefore, all I'll do is make some small marks like I told you about before to indicate feathers. And for the tail, a lot of the time what you're doing is just drawing um, lines from the rump to the end of the tail. And if you want, you can also indicate some feathers on the rump. So the next step is the feet. So in this picture, I'm showing the feet um, attached to the branch, like you can see in the photo. And uh, so the feet are basically just like feet. They're like curved down and then in this prothonotary warbler, there are three toes in the front and one toe in the back, so that's what I'll draw. And uh, if you want, you can go into some greater details. Like, I made the bands on the feet. And if you look closely in this picture, there's actually a um, radio transmitter on the back, or a geolocator, I'm not sure what that is really. But if you want, you could draw that. I chose not to, but it's really your preference. And the next step is background. So when I'm making the background, I, I don't tend to add that much because I feel like if you add a lot, it might take away from the bird, which in many situations and in this situation is like the center point for the picture. But if you want to do a more landscape-oriented picture, possibly with a flock of birds, you can go into greater detail. So I just drew the branch, and really pay attention to the shape of the branch. So in this case, it goes up and then curves back behind the bird. And make sure it reaches the ends of the feet so it looks like the bird is holding onto the branch. And you can also do shading on the sides of the branch and go into greater detail with moss and lichens. Something that is hard to do with pen, which I used in this drawing despite some my rules, is that um, you can't really use the blending tortillon with shading. So I just drew lines for shading. But if you're using a pencil, you could like kind of make it look more smooth and make sure to sign your name when you are done and also the date, but I didn't include that in this one. The date is really helpful because then you can look back at your progress in bird drawing. So um, before we leave, I want to talk about working with color. So as you probably noticed, I didn't add color to the to the um, the bird drawing I just did, and also not to the ones I showed you at the beginning. Which, because to be honest, I don't really like working with color. And not everyone does, and that's okay. So if you do want to work with color, I suggest only adding a little. But you can also go into greater brightness of color if you want. And uh, this is actually something I did in the drawings I showed you at the beginning of the slideshow. I used graphite to show different shades. So I colored in with like just basic pencil graphite and then shaded that in using the blending tortillon. And feather density can also indicate color. So if the feathers on a bird are closer together and smaller, it can make the overall color of the bird seem darker. While if the feathers are more spread out, it can make the color seem lighter. So I'm going to go back to the slide 
And as you can see, there are some um, feathers on the stomach, which makes it almost look like streaks with, which, to be honest, that could be better, but um, if you're using pencil or colored pencil, you can make that even lighter, and then it will look less like streaks and more just like the texture of the plumage. So um, also, when working with color, I recommend colored pencils because for me, that's just easier, but everyone has their preferences. You can also use pens or markers or even charcoal or pastels or crayons. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.